Um, you know, most of most of these guys that make it, I mean, especially in, in our era, I mean, they work their tails off. Mm -hmm. you, you, you didn't, I don't recall any of them just stumbling into it, you know, you had to, they had an agenda and they wanted to be a star, you know, they worked at it and were lucky enough to get with the right people. And Case was maybe just a little too lackadaisical fun loving to really Go at it. Yeah. You know. When uh, when I was in, when we were producing the smoke ring in Memphis, during that time I was working for a bank and moonlighting the music because I had a family to feed. And when I left that and came here, that was like the hound at my heels. I didn't want to go back to that kind of mm -hmm. life, and so. I came here with a, a, a fire built under me, you know. I wanted to make a living here. <laughs> and uh, I tried to, uh, you know, always encourage Jim. And, uh, and I, I still think he could have done way more than he did. But he was happy and he, he, he I have no criticism, you know. He you know, was, <clears throat> we were, like I said, we would talk often, and you know, he said to me one time, he goes, you know, I, I've been lucky in my life to, you know, meet so many great, talented people and like, not only like work with them, but like, like you guys, be lifelong friends with. He goes, you know, my friends, he's like, they have all the success. He goes, you know what, like looking back, I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, another disadvantage for Casey, he didn't have an ego. Yeah. Mm. But when it came to friendship, that was about as pure as it could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind of the next thing I wanted to ask about was what is what did Jim mean to you guys as as a friend? Well, he meant everything to all of us. I mean, yeah. It was just, I think we all loved him. We still talk about him, tell yeah. stories about him. Uh, Very loyal friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He got, right up until he passed away, he you know, would call me and was some, called me up and was uh, pretending to be some someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I got, uh, one time Casey had a, I had a girlfriend, he didn't, so my girlfriend got him a blind date. And her name was Lolita, and Casey thought, oh, Lolita, she sounds wonderful, sounds beautiful. And she turned out to be about six, four, and about 250 pounds. <laughs> Casey was very disappointed. But, uh, so I would call, I, I got, so I got the, doing, doing my job, Casey, I'd call him and say, hey, Jim, this is old Sergeant Johnson, is it? I said, you know, uh, my little, poor little wife, little leader, has never forgotten the way you broke her heart. <laughs> I said, I know where you live, buddy, and I'm coming for you. <laughs> Deal, it's you. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know if, if Jim ever even told you this, Bob, but uh, we were talking on the phone one day, and uh, I don't even know what we were talking about, and he just goes, he mentioned you, and... And he said, you know, I had to get you and you and Bob together. You guys can go grab lunch or something. I said, okay. And, you know, I had already met you guys a couple of times at that point. So I was like, well, okay. You know, I was like, I'll, I'll go get, it. you know, me, me and Dickie, we've, we've hung out a few times. We've gone out and grabbed dinner and whatnot. And so I was like, okay. And uh, he goes, yeah, uh, this was like during the pandemic. So he goes, uh, yeah, you know, he normally gets together with, uh, yeah, what's the guy? And he's trying to pull the guy's name out, you know, and he's, he's trying to give me hints. And uh, finally he gets to uh, Dolly Parton, the, 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 the guitar player. And, and, and then he finally got something that I was like, Vince Gill? And he goes, yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, uh, so evidently uh, 
you would regular meet up with Vince Gill to get lunch or something. No, running, you I, you I, would I, run into each other or something. At the, at the deli all the time. <laughs> and so, you know, I was tickled to death that uh, Jim would think of me as to be a replacement for Vince Gill for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, you know. I thank you, Jim. I don't. Uh, I'm not sure I could step in those uh, those <laughs> shoes, but you know, I'm sure I'd give it a try. Well, you know, up until the time of his dying, uh, we probably talked maybe every two or three weeks. Yeah. Uh, you know, he'd, he'd call and like he would disguise his voice, right? <laughs> Make you think he was somebody else, a bill collector or something, you know. And, he was, and he, he, was a, he called me a week before he died, actually. Yeah. That was the last wow. time we talked. Mm. Yeah. He was a card until the end. <laughs> uh, this was just, I get, uh, I want to say, like a couple weeks before he passed away, he was in Walmart, and there was one of the... Uh, one of the sisters at the monastery who he had become really close with. He would go up there to the monastery regularly and he got really close with this, this one particular lady and, and so he was like in Walmart and he, and he saw her in one of the aisles and she's grabbing something off the shelf, you know, and, and he, uh, he gets a, on his big boom of voice and he said, you know, shoplifter and aisle, you know, whatever aisle it was, you know, or something like that, you know, and she's like looking around and she's like, oh, Jim, you know. <laughs> you know giving the business to one of the sisters, you know. Yeah. So, oh, boy, I mentioned to my daughter, I said, do you remember Jim Casey? He just passed away. Do I remember Jim Casey? <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, she was just crying. Kids, kids loved it. And he loved kids in return. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've got a picture of him somewhere, like, uh, sitting down when my oldest daughter was six years old. He was, <laughs> she had this little set of table and chairs, you know, and he was, his big butt was sitting crammed into this little bitty chair, you know, <laughs> sitting there under him drinking tea. You know? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, he was just, He's just such a fun-loving guy. It's like whenever my phone would ring and I'd see Jim Casey, I'm like, this is going to be fun. Yeah. Like we're going to get into stuff. He's going to, you know, he's going to say something off the wall. And, <clears throat> you know, like he just, he always had this sort of like irreverent streak to him. You know, it's like he, he would be up during his show and he would always like say s something that, because I think he he loved the idea that there was someone out there going, oh God, I'm like <laughs> should he be saying that in public? <laughs> that kind of thing. I remember, you know, and we we've talked a lot about they, they he and he and, and and Bob they used to do these skits all the time, you know. And I, I remember, oh golly, one night when we were still living in Memphis, it was winter time. It was right getting close to Christmas, and I remember he comes he comes to the door, you know, having, having a few people over and uh, some of the smoke ring guys are there, Bob and them are there and, and Bob we're, we're Bob Hup, yeah. And we're we're drinking it. so so uh, I think oh and little Joe's there. Well, yeah. Little Joe goes to sleep. He he falls asleep on the couch. And then so Bob and Casey <laughs> they start this skit like like little Joe all of a sudden He's this body in this funeral home, you know, and they're they're discussing, you know, one of them is his, his brother, you know, they're they're discussing yeah. the price on how they're going to do the funeral and all this kind of stuff, and this goes on for about, you know, we've been in there about two hours. It's really freezing cold, and all of a sudden the, the doorbell rings, go to the door, this this girl comes in, it was Casey's date. He left her in the car. She been out there for like two hours, just freezing to death. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, yeah, he always he always had these little little stories he would tell about about a psalm or something, you know. And you know, I would hear them over and over because I would go out and see him, and they would just I know I know the punchline. I know it's coming. But it would just never fail to make me laugh. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it was about, like the way he could 
tell a story. He could just always make it funny and interesting. I thought he could have been a professional comedian no, no, if he wanted to. Because yeah. he, he was a natural entertainer. Yeah. He loved making people laugh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very natural person. Just like yeah, where, where yeah. wherever you go, it's like, just like, hey, hey, buddy. You know, it's like we, we me and, you know, uh, Matt, we always joked about uh, his favorite thing to do was to go to hy V to the grocery store. If he was bored, you know, to go talk to people. Because, you know, he couldn't go five minutes without somebody being, oh, hey, Jim. And, you know, just like I met him at hy V You know, it's like and that turns into... You know, a 15, 20 yeah. minute conversation, and you know, yeah. So, be something else. <laughs> Any, uh, I'm just kind of like open up the, the floor. Any final things you guys would want to share about Jim? And did we, did we it, touch base? He's one of those guys you can never forget. I mean, you think, uh, but you know, every once in a while, I'll just start laughing, be by myself, thinking of something that he said or did, you know. I miss him. He's, he's, he's always with you. I do too. I'm also always happy to hear from you. I remember uh, the the day when when he had his heart attack. Um, Daisy called me and I couldn't answer the phone at that moment, so it took me a few minutes to call her back. And I grabbed my phone and I saw that I had two text messages that had come in and I just hit it and then the first one I saw was from my mom and I hit it and it said, have you heard anything about Jim? And my you know, stomach just dropped because mm -hmm. Daisy had just called me yeah. and I just knew. And then look at Daisy's text and she just said, hey man, like, call me when you get a chance. And so I called her right back and, and she was on the phone with one of our our friends from Nebraska, Virgil Balmer, mm -hmm. and uh, she said, hey, she said, I'm talking to Virgil right now. She said, let me call you right back. So in about three minutes from the time I got off the phone, from the time she called back, I was in my car and I had uh, my iPod going and the very next song, and I told this to Daisy and Jesse and Matt, I'm like, I swear to you guys, this is true, this happened. The very next song that came on my iPod was Jim Casey, Tired of the Road, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> he did a beautiful job of that. He played it. He uh, played that for me. Yeah. yeah. I just thought, like, wow. And that Daisy calling me back and then getting the news and then reflecting on, like, wow, like. Yeah. But that, uh, you're right. That that was. Quite a moment, I'm sure, because of what the, the lyrics of that song. Yeah, yeah. I had, uh, <clears throat> you know, and and uh, I always knew at some point, you know, Jim was a lot older than me. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna get that phone call at some point that, you know, Jim's mm -hmm. gonna be gone, and I wasn't ready for it. You know, I, I still I think of him all the time, and just like you said, it's like I'll start thinking something and I laugh and just go, oh. Like I'm, I'm just so grateful to have met him, become friends, and getting got brought into to his orbit, you know. And uh, one one of our friends, Tom Benjamin, said, you know, Casey had a had a big heart. And, you know, he had room for big heart. A lot of people. He, he brought us a lot of joy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm like you. I'm, I'm glad to have been in his orbit too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. No, nobody, no professional comedian has ever made me laugh any, any more than he's made me laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you, if you guys don't have anything else, uh, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up. So once again, Bob McDill, Dickie Lee, Alan Reynolds, thank you guys for joining me and uh, talking about our pal Casey. I, I really, That's fun. I really appreciate it. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, guys.